How's it going, people? Doing great. My new uh, casa. Welcome to my slice of paradise. I've been digging a trench all day. Because <laughs> I don't have any hot water up here. Because I need to dig a new propane line. So, time for a nice refreshing libation. Strongbow. Hard cider. Sounds refreshing and loaded with antioxidants. Oh, that is, <clears throat> that's crisp. And um, I found this recently. Barry the Heroic Dog. And I I thought it's time I read this and shared it with you folks. It's from Moments with the Book. Fine publishers of religious hearted bullshit. All right, let's uh, see. Uh, Barry has his own uh, barrel with a tap on his, <laughs> on his neck. Because, you know, people really do that with St. Bernard's. I should get a St. Bernard. <laughs> uh. Uh. The National Geographic magazine, some time ago, devoted a large section of one of its issues to the subject of dogs and their deeds. And the following story of Barry is well worth repetition. Just not worth citing the issue and the date and the year. And, you know, so we can check that out. It's just a while ago. <laughs> I mean, don't they have the magazine in front of them? Anyway, supposedly they wrote about Barry the Her Heroic Dog in some time ago in an issue of National Geographic. All right. <sighs> Barry belongs to that breed of dog known to the world as a St. Bernard stock. The famous dog during his lifetime actually saved more than 40 human beings from being frozen to death high in the Alps. Not an exact number, but more than 40. Uh, eh. They're off to a good start, citing their sources, giving us specific details. We know it's a St. Bernard. Somewhere in the Alps. All right. Whenever a snowstorm begins, these well-trained, devoted dogs become very excited at the prospect of saving men from a terrible death. They leap and bark and show every sign of impatience. Uh, if they are not sent out into the storm immediately, God has gifted these great dogs with a keen sense of scent. <laughs> a sense of scent. Um, so that they can discover a person, although he may be buried many inches beneath the snow. Oh, this is, this is damn good. Highly recommended. Strong bow. <sighs> All right. But the strange and sad part of Barry's unique story is that while he saved more than 40 persons, he lost his own life during his last rescue. It would have to be his last one, I guess. <laughs> Unless he came back three days later and rescued one more person. <laughs> Sorry, a little less levity here. This is a tragic story. Okay. After digging 
the perishing man out of the snow, the dog stretched himself over the body of the man as he had been trained to do, to impart warmth and revive the flickering part, spark of life. When the man began to regain consciousness, he saw the huge dog hovering over him. In his dazed, drowsy condition, he mistook the dog for a wolf. Because St. Bernard's look just like wolves. Same coloration and nothing. <laughs> yeah. National Geographic. Some issue some time ago. Intent on devouring him, the big bad wolf, with a keg on his neck. Quickly, he plunged a dagger into the animal's side. Without a whimper, the noble dog crept away to his home, leaving a trail of blood which led rescuers to the injured man who kicked his ass for killing their dog. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, news of the death of Barry soon spread, causing genuine grief because of such a tragedy. The deeds of Barry, the heroic dog, stand as a monument to the selfless nature of these St. Bernards. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Why did this man, imperiled as he was, do such a cruel, terrible thing? He was possessed by the devil. Maybe. I don't know. Just guessing. Uh, because he misunderstood the dog's presence and mission. That's it. He thought the dog had come to devour him. But actually, he had come to deliver him. How many today, in regards to spiritual things, have wrong thoughts as to God and his plan of salvation for lost man. <coughs> like the man in the parable of the talents. See Matthew 25, 24, and 25. See, now they can cite their sources. <laughs> but that's the Bible, not National Geographic. All right. Uh, who said, I knew thee, that thou art a hard man. And hard cider. They think that God is hard, cruel, and even non-existent. He can't be cruel and hard if he doesn't exist. In the imagination, maybe. Like Darth Vader is a cruel and hard guy. But he doesn't really exist. He's just fictional. <sighs> this is exactly what Satan wants man to believe about God and his Son. When the truth is, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 And the Son of God loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20 yep. This is what God wants you to know and believe, dear reader, that you might be delivered from the dreadful peril of eternal separation from God, the second death in a lake of fire. For there are no St. Bernards with kegs of brandy. What are your thoughts right now about Christ? That it's a bunch of bullshit, and that three, John 3.16 3, makes no sense at all. You cannot plead ignorance, for have you not heard that he died on the cross for sinners, and therefore for you? Have you not heard that he rose from the dead, according to the scriptures, and now lives to appeal 
to you through his holy word. He has salvation for you if you will be, but if you will but repent and accept him as your personal savior. Nothing personal. Why not allow him to warm you with his love and save you by his power right now? Do not neglect nor misunderstand the purpose of Christ's work for you. Turn to him now in repentance and faith. For he desires to save you with an eternal salvation from his vengeful daddy who made hell but waited till Jesus showed up to introduce it, I guess. For that was just Sheol. All right. Call upon him as Peter did. Lord, save me. And immediately hear him say to you in reply, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Luke 7.15, because that's what you'll hear his voice in, in your head. Or that, you know, burning in the bosom or something. Uh, and he believed on me. Uh, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. John 6, 47. He that, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name of his only begotten son, John 318. And that's all they had to say about Barry the dog. It kind of he he was mistaken for a wolf and um bye bye Barry. You know, a wolf in St. Bernard's clothes, I guess. Anyway, that was a load of shit. I thought they were gonna tell me about a dog. I love dogs. Dog stories are nice, but this was just had nothing to do with the dog at all. I don't even know what issue of National Geographic to look up. Anyhow, I'm done digging my trench for the day, and I'm going to have some dinner now. And then I'll dig some more tomorrow and then go back to work. <laughs> oh. I love housing, having my own house. Anyway, I'm just getting ready for winter. And um, I only come up here on weekends right now. I'm still living down in the city. So... I'll do more videos up here because I can speak as loud as I want. <laughs> I have no neighbors nearby. Peace the fuck out. And I want you to have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having. And uh, don't go around stabbing dogs, you know, just because they're laying on you. I guess that was a message, you know. You know, please don't let him be misunderstood. He's just a good dog whose intentions are good. 